Okay, this is a mature adult with impingement, evaluate for rotator cuff tear. Not a particularly enlightening or deep history, but let's get right to the axial projection. We start up really high. We'd like to see some tendon fibrils coursing over the top of the humeral head. Perhaps we see a few right here, but not much else. But let's go through our axial checklist. We work our way down to the level of the coracoid, and we see this floppy little structure right here, which should be a straight line going from the coracoid all the way over to the humeral head, the coracohumeral ligament, it's gone. Let's keep going, shall we? Let's go a little further caudally. Sorry, that's the wrong direction, there we go, caudally. And the subscapularis, which should have a broad footprint or plug right here, is gone. Let's keep looking at it. Let's go down a little further. That is not normal tendon tissue. That is fibrous tissue in old blood. Still, the subscapularis is gone. And then when we get down really low, we see a little bit of the subscapularis hanging on by a thin thread and a little bit of the middle glenohumeral ligament underneath it. Let's go back up. The middle glenohumeral ligament is this grayish, ill-defined structure. And I'm not attempting uh, to define its character at this very moment. But clearly, we have lost the coracohumeral ligament. We've lost most of the subscapularis. And then finally, the axial projection shows us the status of the biceps, which is reduced to a thin thread that is perched and sitting on the edge of the lesser tuberosity. And as we work our way up higher, there's the takeoff of the biceps, and then we lose it as a very thin, wispy structure. It never really seats itself into the bicipital groove so we've got three components of the rotator cuff already that are torn. Remember, there are six components. So let's finish off the other three. What are they? They're the supraspinatus. Let's go to the front of the shoulder. Wow, there's the Grand Canyon right here. We'll draw the edge of the tear from here to here. So this is our retraction dimension. It's quite large. And then let's keep scrolling backwards to the infraspinatus, which is more posteriorly. There's another canyon through which you can drive your truck. Here it is from here to here. So we have an infraspinatus tear that's fairly massive. It has substantial retraction, which we could measure. And then we've got the teres minor, which never tears. Let's scroll back to that, although we like the sagittal projection for it better. Let's go all the way back to the teres. Here's the teres and it's fine. So let's look at the sagittal projection for a moment. We've got virtually a bald humeral head. There are a few wispy fibers of the infraspinatus, the supraspinatus. These are just fibers flopping in the breeze, surrounded by inflammatory tissue. We are missing almost the entirety of the subscapularis. And my goal here is just to get you in the habit nothing else, gets you in the habit of going through your checklist. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, coracohumeral ligament, subscapularis, biceps labral anchor, and capsule. And here the capsule is most likely torn. You can ascertain that through just indirect observation because there's so much fluid everywhere.